Hey all, my name is Kurt. I'm here with Trenton. Welcome to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. And today we get to taste the Cellar Age Maker's Mark that we've been looking for for a long time. I can, looking forward to. I was going to say it just came. We just got this a couple days ago. Right. I can feel the excitement radiating I, from I, uh, your side. I can't even get my words straight. Especially with the, um, if you missed, we had a live stream on Friday the Maker's Mark DNA coming out on top. That was, I was shocked. I'd never even heard of DNA. Oh, I, got I didn't one even know what the bot, well, thank you very much. But I knew nothing about it. And it was fabulous. I mean, it was yeah. really, really good stuff. That's And that even geared me up more. You know, when Harry texted and said, oh, I got a cellar aged. Well, I was like, okay. Well, and to the, the video on Friday with our blind, Maker's came out on top. Yeah. The live stream, Makers came out on top. So let's see let's if third time is a charm and it actually is as good yep. as some folks are saying it is. All right, buddy. Well, this says it's a special blend of aged barrels. 13% of the whiskey is aged 11 years. And 87% of the whiskey is aged for 12 years. It is 115.7 proof. $150 MSRP. $150. Now, we'll wait until after we taste to, to give our opinion on the on the money. Right off the bat, though, I have to say I'm still licking my wounds from that uh, Wild Turkey Master's Keep oh, yeah. bottle for $300. I, that's just, what a bummer that was. So, yeah. at least, you know, if this, if this is an excellent bottle, special release, limited release... If it's really good, 150 bucks, you know, we'll, we'll find out. We'll see what's in it. Well, I feel like this this is going to be a, an interesting bottle just because after this is their first release since their Maker's Mark wood finishing series. Right. And I'm hoping that the the success, depending on how actually good it is, the success of this is kind of going to prompt Maker's Mark to do some more special releases like this. Well, because they they really don't. It's they have their base products and the limiteds. My question to you is, and I did see that, uh -huh. you know, it's written in the front of the bottle, 2023 release. It gives you that feeling that there might be another one. 2024, maybe bring, bring another one. I, I feel like I heard somewhere that, that this is going to be an annual thing, yeah. but I could be wrong. I've, yeah. There's been a lot of yeah. allocated and a lot of yearly annual releases coming out. It yeah. could be something I read in there, but yeah. This has been highly anticipated. I don't know what secondary. I haven't seen this on secondary yet. It literally just came out right. like yesterday. I'm shocked we have it. This, uh, this Shout out to Harry. Yeah, I mean, we usually last on the list for limited I know. bottles. Yeah. But I know a few others have gotten it. But not by a, not by a long, long time ago. You stick your schnoz in there. I could... Uh, I could this is one you just want to just, you just want to live in there. Live in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, I mean, it's just, it's just dynamite. Well, I'm... it's so reminiscent to me, Trenton, as when you walk into the, uh, the brick houses, you know? Yeah. I mean, real. it's just, and, and from a lot of you folks that have visited distilleries, you have that wonderful smell, the aromas and the angel share and things that are happening in those brick houses. To me, this is almost a duplicate of that. It's like you're it's like you're sitting in one. And when I visit distilleries, that never gets old. No, no, that I could never smell that all gets day old. Long. Walking in a Rick house. No. If my house can smell like that, <laughs> that's what I'm all saying. All the time. I, that's why I just I can live in that. Yeah, you know. Well, so I'm getting. This is probably my fault. I don't know if you're getting it, but I'm getting. Harry likes to put these stickers on it. You know that you have to like scrape off price stickers yeah i um yeah i couldn't find the goog on upstairs so i put some wd-40 on it and i think i got some wd-40 on my fingers True. so i'm getting a little bit of that wd-40 i'll promise note. you one thing this does not smell like wd -40. you don't have a wd-40 note no. okay so that's just me that's you pal. okay sorry about that you shouldn't want that you shouldn't want that far you gotta have goog on a little bit more i mean it's a available. beautiful caramel vanilla trend it's just it's just i mean Gosh, it's just so nice. It's just a syrup note in there. It's caramel. It's vanilla. 
I get some kind of like a light fruitiness. Yeah. Dark fruit. It's not like actually figgy. actually a little cherry note for That's me. That's what I was thinking. It's yeah. not like a figgy type of dark thing. Drinking buddy will be proud of me. He gets cherry on everything. Does he? <laughs> yes, he does. But I do. You're right. There's like a black cherry note in yeah. there for me. All right, you're it's just it's lovely, lovely nose. That's well worth the wait. Well worth the wait. Wow. That's an epic pour. Now, this one doesn't delve dark. No. It doesn't doesn't go dark. Another when I say that, I mean like a dark brown sugar, molasses notes, leather tobaccos. You know, that's all good stuff too, but it doesn't go there. But wow. The, my first impression, as as soon as it got into my <clears throat> palate, Trenton, was the viscosity. Yeah. I mean, this is creamy. It's just a creamy mouth mouth feel. Everything that is on the nose is on the palate. It's incredibly well balanced. The proof really lends. It almost elevates it a little bit for me. I don't even want to swallow it. It's I mean, in there. You, I, you I just could, you I could keep it in there. It might like burn I, after a while. I just want to just keep going with it. And speaking of the proof trend, that's proof point is right up my alley, as you yep. know. Yep. That 115 proof, 110, 115 proof is right up my alley. For me, it, it's consistent. Trenton was was correct there. From the aromas to the palate, it's very consistent. It's a beautiful caramel, a beautiful vanilla. There is a cherry note in there again for me on the palate for sure. This, I'll say this right now, this is without a doubt top five of this year. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to think about it in terms of like more of an allocated, because we usually do, we do an allocated, mm -hmm. non-allocated, yeah. rye, that kind of thing at the end yeah. of the year. Mm -hmm. I would be shocked if the last couple releases out of this year top this. Yeah, that's just, uh, I, I think there's a little bit of baking spice in there is what's, I, l what's l lending to the depth. I get something like that, like an allspice yeah. or a clove or, or something yes. like that. Yes. And it, it's really yeah, no nice. Doubt. It's not overpowering. Usually mm -hmm. clove and allspice can be really aggressive with how they present. It's in the background yeah. here for me, but it lends to the depth of the sip, right? It's, it's so not subtle that even like the vanillas and stuff kind of, they don't overpower it, but no. you, you get more of the vanilla than like a clove yeah. allspice kind yeah. of Yeah, to me, thing to me, Trent, and I'm gonna take another sip in a second here, but to me, on the palate, the stars are the caramel vanilla cherry. But then that, that bit of baking spice there, as you said, the allspice, it, it, or something like that, comes through just a little bit to give it some depth of flavor. Would you go as far as to say it's almost like a a cherry cola vanilla float kind of thing? <laughs> the thing I'm struggling like and if you wanted to antiquate it from. to like a, mm -hmm. a a food. But it it's not uh like it's not cola esque. It's mm -hmm. more of like a bakery esque yeah. type thing. But holy Crap. Yeah, you know, and, and let's speak a little bit about that cherry note because the Calumet 16, mm -hmm. remember I had to go back to it personally, I don't know if you did or not, but I had to a couple, two or three times because I'm not a huge fan of a sharp medicinal nope. cherry note. Mm -hmm. well, on, on that one, I had to go back to it a couple, two or three times to decide and I decided, no, it really wasn't. It was just a strong note. This is nothing like a medicinal cherry note. This no. is just like a very sweet cherry. Well, I said I don't like medicinal, but I used to like buy the Luden's cough drops and just eat them <laughs> as candy. There's, I, there was like no medicine in you there. You know, probably. I know a lot of folks. I never did that. What? I never. I didn't like it. I didn't like the vapors up in my nose. Now, if I wasn't feeling good or something, okay. But I, I just didn't. I never ate. Oh, there's a halls. You don't eat halls. If you, <laughs> like, ha having a halls is no fun at all. Okay, you gotta well, go maybe that's colas. where. Okay, Ludens are like these little. <laughs> it's no almost idea. like a lemon or a lemon head, but like a cherry head. If there's 
Okay. It's basically well, candy. All I remember is halls. Halls are awful. And it is. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. I was like, vapors from a Luden's cough drop. What kind of Luden's oh, are you no. need? Yeah, I, halls. I, to be truthful, I don't know if I've ever had Luden's. And to be honest, I didn't know if there's any there's any difference between them. Only you would know that because they're kind of like candy. Hall, like if you have a halls, your palate is screwed for the rest of the day. <laughs> it's awful. It's no, it's no fun. It's awful. I just stayed away from. It. Maybe I'll try Ludens. You should. Or I have cola. I have. Oh, Ricolas are good. I yeah. have some at home. Um, of course you do. Given given what you get uh -huh. for one hundred fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and especially since the previous Maker's Mark wood finishing series, they landed about seventy seventy five dollars. So this is double the price. Mm -hmm. What do you think for the price? Yeah, I think the price is right on. I'm extremely happy it's not, let's talk relative terms. I'm talking as Wild Turkey Masters Keep 300. I'm happy it's not extremely high. Mm -hmm. I think it's priced right, and I think it's fair. I mean, it's some older bourbon. This is, this is, is just traditional, quintessential Maker's Mark elevated to a whole new level. Yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, I think it's priced right. It's something that, you know, I would keep for a few years. It's not going to, you know, I wouldn't pour this every other day or yeah. you know, once a week. Or, yeah. No, this is just a special time thing. And it's, Something it's, you want to tuck in at night, like all, all nice and cozy and a little bassinet. <laughs> it's that know? good. Now, Trenton, you need to talk to this because you're more in tune than I am, but... According to what was Harry was telling me, he said I think there was only 38 or 40 bottles allocated to the whole state of Indiana. Of Indiana. That's what I heard. Is that accurate? It was the allocations for this were very low. I don't know what the total production volume but like a, a bottle wise for mm -hmm. this one was. I don't know that they released that. Usually you can find stuff, you know, it's like hey, we got X amount of cases. I don't know that the I don't know the case yeah. count for this. It might be 3 per case. Usually right. that's the case when it's allocated like this. Right. But, mm -hmm. We were fortunate enough to acquire one, so thank you, Harry, for allowing us to purchase one and do the video on it. This was a real I'm, treat. I'm not, I'm not usually a makers, uh, like a base makers fan. Mm -hmm. Like the the BEP wasn't a huge fan of. The FAEs are solid. B, uh, not BEP, FAE, and the one before that, um, BRT. Yeah. Those are pretty good. This, I think, is going to put makers kind of on the map for allocated oh, or without, for, without for limited releases. Yeah. You know, this is a heck of a way to come out swinging out of the gate for something like this. Oh, it was well done, well worth the wait. Well done. And I'd be curious if they had this planned, even if the wood finishing series wasn't going to go away. We'll probably never know. Yeah. So yeah. makers, I keep keep putting stuff like this out. Oh yeah. This is awesome. Great job. Fantastic. Really delicious. Really is. And, and you know who knows what bottles may be in your area. My suggestion would be talk to your store owners. You know, try to get some of the vibe of what's coming in and what's coming out. Uh, I know that it's hard to find these, and you know that's we're fortunate. Okay, very, you know, very I mean, fortunate. that's and we have the channel and we got a lot of stuff going on here. You know, and that's the main reason. And we still we still don't get all the limiteds. Nope, we don't, and that's a fact. I mean, we're just you know, but there are quite a few that we were able to get our hands on and, and we're just lucky to be in that in this position to do that. So hopefully you might be able to see it somewhere if you do or even have a chance to have a pour in a bar somewhere. You know, if it's fairly priced, I'd reason, I, I would highly suggest it. That's a good thing quickly before we wrap up. What are we doing? Oh, we're not too bad. What, what would you pay mm -hmm. for a pour of this? Oh yeah, I don't know. I, if somebody if somebody asked you like, hey, you tried it, what would you? If I wanted to buy this at a bar, what would you pay for a pour? You know, one ounce. One ounce or you know, just a one ounce pour, twenty to thirty bucks, just to give it a try. Okay. You know, I would, knowing what I know now. Yeah. It'd be hard to pull that trigger not knowing, you know, for sure. But just to give it a try, I would. You know. I think if you can find a pour of this for an ounce between. 30 35 dollars maybe 40 i think it's i think it's worth the experience especially if they kind of give you a one and a half for mm -hmm. the usually it's one and a half sometimes in some places i've been to yeah, you, if you can get that for 30 35 40 bucks yeah, I, you, I i would go there if i were you now that's that's a lot we say that that's a lot to spend on, this, on a single pour or something it is but if you are in an area where these are not around or you're not on some fancy list 
mm -hmm. um, or you're you don't have a good relationship with an owner, etc. And, and you know, there's a lot of folks out there that, that watch the channel that are just as happy with an old Forester 1920. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. More power to you. You know, you're the customer. You have the choice, and you have the right to to take your time and try to find one of these and or purchase that, or just walk to the shelf and get your favorite bourbon. That would be a good thing, a good blind. 1920, this, a couple other base ones. We'll do that in a future video to kind of see where yeah. the, the seller age sure. lands. Yeah. Because there are yeah. several solid options around this proof point yeah. for a lot less and are readily available. So we'll do something like that. Well, that see, where, see where it lands. Flash Creek barrel proof. Yeah. There you go. All right, that's all we got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. I don't remember the last time that I actually finished my Glenn Karen in a show. I'm going to finish mine real quick. Today I did. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. Hope you have a great week. See you next time, right down here with Trent and I in the good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.